everybody! It's travel with nine time! First of all, Ramadan Mubarak to everybody! I hope that this month it will be a blessed month for every one of us. Inshallah. Today, I am going to talk about my second home. If you guys have not guessed it yet, my second home is Perth City in Australia. Australia! Australia. Well, uh, Perth is actually located in Western Australia and I moved there in 2008 to complete my degree and I lived there for a couple of years. Then I went back to Singapore for work. I have made very close community of friends who have literally become my families and totally, totally miss them a lot. Heaps, heaps. Because every year, ever since I work abroad, I will try to visit them and I just love catching up with them. I learned to appreciate and love this city a lot. Uh, but because of uh, the pandemic, I have not seen any one of them. I have not carried the babies of my best friends. I mean, by the time the borders open, I tell you, the kids will be like growing up so much. I mean, that's, that's what kids do. They grow up so fast. What's the deal with that? Seriously, you kids, slow down. I wanna, I wanna manimang. Is that the word? Is that the word manimang? The baby, like I just wanna carry the baby and touch, you know? Smooth faces, the smell of the babies. <laughs> I'm not a psycho. I also have families there, so, so I am going to talk to you guys about Perth City. Now, I'm not gonna like lump on into one video because I received feedback from y'all that I should do mini videos. So what I'm gonna do is today, I'm going to cover the essential things that you need to know before visiting Perth. And then subsequent videos, I will talk about places you can go to, things you can do, yada, yada, yada. And I try to include the budget. I also will uh, cover videos on other Australian states which I have traveled to. So it will be a couple of videos. <laughs> It'll be good, it'll be good, it'll be good. Let me first give you a geology of Perth City. Oh, oh. Perth City is actually built on this river called the Swan River. So basically the metropolitan area has two major river systems. And these major systems have four rivers. And the rivers are Swan River, the Canning River, Serpentine, and the Murray River. And all of these four rivers, they meet together at one point at Mandra. So that's basically Perth, right? And most of Perth is actually built on wetlands. So there are a lot of freshwater wetlands and coves that you can go to and explore. Listen, I know it's COVID and Perth right now is restricting international traveling. Uh, I think the domestic flights are open and safety first, but that does not mean that you, you know, you can't plan for your next destination. I have to say, you have to put Perth on your holiday list. One, because I'm biased. Two, I can help you guys out. Like I will try to like give you advice and tips uh, based on my personal traveling experience, um, living experience. This lockdown thing, it will give you more time to appreciate your own country as well as research, you know, like on the places that you want to visit once the borders open, all these kind of things. So I am here to help as much as I can by sharing my knowledge, all right? Some say that you can visit Perth for like three days or a week. I would say maybe seven to ten days because I really recommend that you do at least one or two road trips because there's a lot more to see in Perth rather than just the CBD or Central Business District area. My first tip would be the Perth International Airport. Now, <laughs> It's nothing in comparison to Singapore's airport, okay? It's it's literally straightforward. Like the moment you 
land and you get off the plane, you just go past duty shops, go down to the baggage area, pick up your baggage or your luggage and then go to the immigration office and that's it. You can exit, right? The only thing that I have to say is when you are in flight, make sure that you fill in two forms. One is the health form. I'm not sure if you can actually fill this up online. I think you can. And number two is the declaration form. I remember that without this declaration form, you cannot exit the airport. The immigration officer takes security seriously. Okay, it's the top priority in Australia, in every airport, all right? So make sure that you have this declaration form. You can ask the stewards and stewardesses in flight and they will help you out with this. Tip number two, rent a car. Rent a car, guys, okay? Um, one, because it's convenient it's easy and you have to go on road trips like at least one or two if you have the time okay because that's the common thing that perthes do we go off down south or up north anywhere just to get out of the central area because there's a lot more things to do there's a lot more things to eat there's a lot more things to see when you go on road trips also the transport cost in perth it's actually quite high apparently transport fees takes up about 40% of an average income in Perth. So that's pretty a lot. I would rather like put that money into renting a car and getting around easily and more conveniently and then enjoy my trip, you know, rather than trying to figure out like which subway or which bus to go to somewhere. Do you get what I mean? Like just rent a car man it will make your life much simpler what i do when i go there is i will rent a car online you can do so or you can rent a car at the airport there are tons of rental companies in perth and the ones that i actually tried were aries in east perth uh, budget this one you can find it in perth airport and thrifty Yes, that's the other one. That also you can find it in the airport. Now, you can pick up the cars and then you can drop them off at the airport as well. So it's pretty um, straightforward. Uh, the thing about Aries, the one thing that I really like about it is that it's affordable. The only downside is that it's in Central Business District area. So to get there is quite inconvenient unless you have a car or you know how to get there by bus but it's actually one of the cheapest rental companies when i was in perth the last time i was there for like seven days and i rented the car for six days and i only paid like 350 dollars and that included insurance as well as the gps device i also have the links below so you guys can check out the, the different uh, rental companies available in perth the one thing that i want to stress to you guys is that most of these rental companies they will request a deposit of two thousand dollars it's actually a normal uh, policy or regulation of um, most rental companies. It's like an insurance just in case, okay? So you will get back this money the moment you drop off your car on the same day. Don't worry about it. It's not like a scam or anything like that. Tip number three, please follow road safety and regulations to the T okay to the letter to the call traffic police in perth they have eyes like a hawk actually better than a hawk okay they they will go down on you if you don't follow the rules and uh, safety regulations of the roads or of the traffic and i'm not joking if you're on the highway and if it says you can only go at 80 miles per hour you can only go at 80 miles per hour no more no less if you want to drive slow please go to the third most lane on your left okay when you're driving australia the driver is actually on the right yeah on the right okay sorry 
If you're slow, stay on your left so that other cars can overtake you. If you're on a 60 miles per hour road, you only have to drive at 60 miles per hour. If it's at 40, 40 miles per hour. No more, no less. If you see a bum or a hum, please slow down. And if you see a stop sign, stop for at least three to five seconds. All right? They are pretty icky about this kind of rules. So follow them. Tip number four, set some money for fuel. Perth is huge. You have, I cannot highlight this any further. Like you have to go on road trips, okay? That's why rent a car, guys. I will be honest with you guys, the fuel consumption is something. For example, on average, in a week, you can spend up to $80 on fuel. That is not accounting long distance trips. You can actually plan your trips and calculate how much fuel you need and how much price you will have to pay uh, if you click on the link below. The cheapest fuel day in Perth is actually on Tuesday and the most expensive is on Wednesday. So if you want to fill up your car, do so on Tuesday. Okay? Regarding tolls, you know what? I don't remember seeing any tolls when I was in Perth. I think like the tolls are more like, you know, in the bustling cities like Sydney, Melbourne, Gold Coast. I don't remember seeing one in Perth, so I don't think it's something that you guys have to worry about. Tip number five, beware of the parking cost. Now, fuel is not so expensive if you want to compare it to parking prices in Perth. <laughs> If you park your car in a city center, then on average you can pay $5 per hour and all day parking can cost about $35. There are other places that you can park in like a little bit outside of the city center and the parking range will be like $15 all the way to $60. <laughs> Personally, if I go to the city centre, I like to park at Wilson Parking. One, because I feel secured there and I've never had any troubles like while parking my car there. So you guys can check that one out. If you guys are not going to rent a car, you guys want to go for the transport, like you want to take the metro or the subway uh, or the buses, um, the only free thing that I can think of uh, is the free transit zone where basically it's like the bus services we call it the cat buses uh, it's got the blue the red yellow and the green lines and you can hop on and off the buses like during lunch period and you can just like go throughout and around the city for free yeah, but that's like only for a specific time period. That's the only downside of the free transit zone bus services. Then again, if you want to rent a car, highly recommended rent a car. Well, if you go out during the weekends, um, you can enjoy up to three hours free parking. So why not guys make your life easier? okay because like if you want to go from one area to another area in Perth it's quite far and the subway goes on at a scheduled timing and sometimes if you miss one train you gotta wait for half an hour to 45 minutes and I'm not exaggerating here okay the bus services are so slow there was one time I actually cried because I was tired and I just wanted to go home but yeah, cars, rent a car. <laughs> I made my point. I also have the link where you can get affordable parking fees in Perth. Look at the link below. Tip number six, Perth's climate. 
the best time to visit Perth is actually from March to May or September to November because March to May it's summer and September to November it's like winter. Summer in Perth can be scorching hot, okay? It can go up to 45 degrees. And the winter is not so freezing, it's more wet and rainy, right? So if you want to go there during summer, please do not forget your sunscreen. Like I said, it can go up to 45 degrees. Like the front window of your car can literally fry an egg. I tried it once. I was trying to be adventurous and I was also curious if it really happens. It does, okay? It fried the egg outside and I had to like freaking clean <laughs> the bonnet of my car <laughs> and the window as well because, you know, I wanted to experiment the heat differences. Okay, th that, that was me when I was young, when I was young, okay? So, wear sunscreen. Now, if you want to visit Perth during the cool time, September, October, November would be good. Does it snow in Perth? No. The last recorded snowing in Perth was in 1968. And then after that, no more. Uh, and the lowest temperature ever recorded in Perth was in 2006, where the temperature actually fell a little below zero degrees. But afterwards, it's more like, you know, um, 10, 11 degrees. So it's really not freezing at all. Oh, oh, one more thing, okay, summer or winter, there are strong gusty winds that will catch you off guard, like, not kidding, okay, I am more of a tropical person, okay, I do not like the cold, my body does not react well to the cold, so even if it's like a small wind, I will shiver, uh, tremble, like that, okay, I, I just... I just cannot like even now like I'm having this little cold because like here in Turkey it's sunny but somehow the wind is just like being bitchy cold I don't understand why like why so I'm having a, a stupid uh, cold and runny nose because of that so in Perth it's more like whoo, the wind is strong and freezing at times and usually this comes like early in the mornings or like late in the evening so if you guys want to stay out late please have like somewhat of a sweater cardigan or a jacket to keep you guys warm that's one thing that i remembered living there another thing um western australia has hot and dry weather and because of this condition it increases the risk of bushfires and also cyclone season so take note of this if you want to travel uh, during the seasons because for example bushfire cyclone can extend from november all the way until april tip number seven keep an eye out actually both eyes out for events and festivals there's always something in perth and that's something usually they can be impressive and i love it the events can range from perth city market cultural food festivals amusement parks concerts wine or chocolate tours sunday picnics summer lunches on cruises Sometimes whale watching, but that's quite rare. Fireworks! The list goes on. And why I love it is because it's like a much needed break for all of us there. Like you can catch up with your families, you can catch up with your friends. And you just have like a day or two of just like eating out, relaxing, chilling, you know, it's, it, that's the community that I really appreciate when I was there. The one thing I would like to highlight here is the food cost. Dining out in Perth can be expensive. For example, per person, per meal can cost in a range of 20 to $50 yeah so that's something like i think it's got to do with the fact that perth is actually quite isolated from the rest of the australian states 
And so the competition is low, therefore, you know, causing the prices to be really jacked up. Mm, I don't know, that's my theory. Tip number eight, beware of the cost of domestic trips. Now, like I mentioned earlier, Perth is isolated. It's located away from the Australian states. For you to get to Perth, or to the Australian states from Perth is actually via domestic flights. That's the quickest way and quite pricey. On average, a person can pay up to $180 per night. And that's a three-star accommodation. Now, if you want to go to New South Wales, that's the most expensive. Uh, you can pay up to $200 to $220 per night. If you want to go to South Australia, that's the cheapest because you can spend, you know, maybe like $100 per night. Let's just put like $200 per night per person if you want to do domestic trip. The least expensive month to travel is actually May. The most expensive is December because, you know, kids, holidays summer vacation yada yada everyone wants to go crazy super expensive lights i think that's about it these are the eight tips that i can think of for you guys to think about when you plan for your trip to perth i hope this helps and i will talk more about perth and the places to go to in the subsequent videos thank you for watching and i will see you next time Bye. Come on, everybody. Clap your hands.